In this video, we're going to go over how to create your first funnel and have it connected correctly to your autoresponder. So the first thing you want to make sure that you've done is come over here to App Integration and connected your autoresponder. As you can see, I have several connected here. And we know that they're connected because we have this cool little plug icon here. If it's not connected, we'll have a plus icon here. so that we know we need to add the integration. So I'm just gonna come over here to MailChimp. I'm gonna click on these three buttons here. Click on View Details. And as you can see, all of my lists for this autoresponder appear down here. So that's how I know that I have it integrated correctly. Now, once we've done this, we can come over here to Funnels. and I'm gonna click on New and create a new funnel. And for this example, I'm going to do the opt-in funnel because it's a really short two-step funnel and it's great to help you get your feet wet and learn the system, it's pretty basic. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Emails, come down here to Next and give it a name. Then I'm gonna come down here to Create Funnel. Now, as you can see, I have both steps of my funnel, the opt-in and the thank you page. So if I want to edit one of these, I'll just click on the option that I want to edit. And we know which one we're editing because of this blue bar here. So I'm going to edit the opt-in page, or if I wanted to do my thank you page, I could come down here. And I know I'm editing the correct page, again, because of this blue bar. So that's very important to keep in mind so that you don't edit the wrong page. I'm actually going to show you how to do your thank you page first, and I'll explain why. Because I want to connect my opt-in form to my thank you page, and I will show you how to do that. But first, I'm just going to create a very basic thank you page. So I'm going to choose variant A. I'm going to do a blank template. And I'm going to come over here to Edit and Builder. Now the only thing I'm going to do here is just add some text and edit it because I just want to show you how they connect and how it works. So I'm just going to type in thank you here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Alignment and Center Align it. I'm going to come up here and click my Save button. And then if I want to, I can come over here and preview this. Perfect. Now I'm going to exit out of my builder and come back over here and edit my opt-in page. Again, I'm going to choose variant A. And I'm going to start with a blank template. I'm going to come over here and edit in builder. And every time you come into your builder, you're going to notice that we have a header section, a body section, and of course a footer section. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to make my header section a little bit bigger. And I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to manage the background. I'm going to keep this video as simple as possible, and I'm not going to go into too much design detail because the idea is to get you started with the essentials or basics and then if we want to add anything additional we'll go over that in other videos. So again I'm going to come over here to manage background. You'll notice a sidebar that appears. So I'm just going to click here and add an image. Now currently I don't have any images here and that's okay. We can add images by uploading our own using stock images, patterns, or icons. So in this example I'm just going to use a stock image and if I want to build a fitness page I'll just go ahead and type in fitness here. 
and I'll be able to choose from any of the many pictures that appear using that keyword. So I'm just going to choose this image and click on the import button down here and you'll see actually I think I'm going to choose a different image because that's not quite the width that I want. So let me go back over here and find another image. I think we'll try this one. Click on import. That's a bit better. So you'll notice now it takes us to a cropping section and this is very important. So just move this around and get the portion of the image that you want. You can make this bigger or smaller. So I'm just going to grab this bottom section of the image and I'm going to click on crop. That's going to add the image over here to the background of my header. Once you've selected an image, you can choose to move the position of the image by clicking on these blocks here. So I'm just going to leave it at that and I can make this bigger or smaller depending on the size that I want. Now again, as I mentioned, I'm not going to go over in a ton of detail about the different options and editing and design that we have, but I do want to show you a couple of things like the overlay color. So maybe I'll just choose a blue. You can choose any color you want. And the overlay opacity. So as you can see, I can make it as dark or as light as I want. If you do want to turn your parallax on, you can do that here. And all that means is that when you scroll, the image isn't going to scroll with your page. So I'm going to go ahead and close this sidebar now. And if I wanted to add a video, I could come over here and click on the video icon. Again, I can move this around wherever I'd like and make it as big or as small as I want to. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it that size and move it over here. Now to edit the video, you just need to make sure that your mouse is clicked inside of it and you'll see the edit object option. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and I can put the link for any video that I want to use right here. As soon as I've placed my link in this box, I'm going to want to make sure that I click this update button. So I'm going to go ahead and close this sidebar. I'm going to show you two different ways to add opt-in forms. If we come over here to form elements, we can do it using a custom HTML. So if I add this and I just stick it right here, I can click this edit object and it's going to open this sidebar and ask me to paste my code in here. Now you can add your own custom HTML or you can simply grab the embed code from your autoresponder. I'm going to go ahead and grab a very simple code in MailChimp. So I'm going to come over here to HQ Webinar. And I'm going to come over here to sign up forms. And I'm going to come over here to embedded forms. Now how you do this is definitely going to vary based on your autoresponder. So you'll want to check with your autoresponder and, and get your form codes from them directly. So I'm going to come over here to just a classic HTML form. I have the form down here. It's a bit long, so I'm going to disable the JavaScript, but I'm going to come down here and copy this and just add the code here. I can close this and I just want to show you what it looks like. Now, please keep in mind, I didn't edit this form code in any way. So it's going to be a very basic design. I'm going to go ahead and click save and I'm going to preview it. 
and here's how it appears. Now, of course, you're definitely want, going to want to check your alignment and design it how you want it to look. So this is just to give you a brief example of what it would look like. If you want to have a little bit more choice in customization, you can go ahead and close this. I'm going to remove the HTML, and I'm going to show you how to set it up with your own personal touch. You can come over, back over here to form codes. We're going to add a couple of text inputs and just move them over here. And we're going to add a submit button. So I'm just going to put this all right here. Now, to connect this to your autoresponder, it's actually really, really very simple. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is edit this top box, because I want that to say first name. So I'm going to click on Edit Object. I'm going to change the placeholder text, and you'll notice that it changes and updates live for you here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it, and just put first name. The assigned field type is going to be first name, and I'm going to make that a requirement. I'm going to go ahead and close out this sidebar. I'm going to highlight my second text field, and again, edit object. This one I'm going to leave as email, but I'm just going to come over here and mark it as required. Close out my sidebar. And now I'm going to work on the submit button, and this is where and how it connects to your autoresponder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Edit Object. The mode I want is for it to be a button. And now you can see it gives me the option to choose my autoresponder. So I'm going to select my autoresponder from the drop down. And now it's asking me to choose a list. So I'll come back over here and I'll choose HQ Webinar as my list, and you'll know that it's connected successfully when you see that green pop up. Now we come down here to the redirection type, and this is why I did my thank you page first. You don't have to do your thank you page first, but I wanted to make sure that when I showed you how this worked, I had it set up completely so you could see how it goes from one part of the funnel to the next. So my redirection type is going to be next funnel step, which we know is the thank you page. If you want to change the text on your button, you can do so here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just close this out. Again, I'm going to come up here and click on Save. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on Preview so I can show you how it all works together. You can see my video is here, my background image is here. I'm going to go ahead and type in my name and an email address and I'm going to click on that Download Here button. Now don't worry about the rest of the page being blank because as you know we haven't actually added or created anything for it. I really just wanted to show you how the opt-in works. So I'm going to click on Download Here, but before I do, I'm going to take you back to my MailChimp list, and as you can see there are currently two subscribers. So when I go back to my opt-in form and I click on the download here button, you can see it takes me to my thank you page that I created. And I'm going to come back over here to MailChimp and refresh this and just show you that now I have three subscribers. So let's go back to our XFunnels tab. You can see both of them are active. And if I come over here to my dashboard, you'll see that I now have two visitors, the number of the pages that I have, how many funnels I've created, and of course, my contacts. So this is how 
you set up your first funnel to connect with your autoresponder in XFunnels.